Hello and welcome to Literary Merit, the show where we tell you what media has value. Spoiler alert, it's all of it. Also, spoiler alert, we'll be discussing spoilers as usual. So here's your warning. I'm Ashley. And I'm Alex. And I'll start by asking, what's new to you, Alex? Uh, um, well, I guess <laughs> that groan is only because I am a little tired because I've had a kind of busy-ish morning, but it's self-inflicted. So, um, <laughs> But the first thing is that thanks to you, I have a new job that I just got hired on for. Yay! So uh, that's so nice. I will be able to uh, support myself like a real full-fledged adult. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. Wonderful. Uh, so that's awesome. And then super awesome. In a little bit more recent news. Or not news, mm-hmm. but this morning I woke up at six thirty, so that I God. could so that I could drive to Target and be there when they open because they launched a new clothing line there. It's like, <laughs> and normally I would never, except for it's like, I don't know, quote unquote like trendy, <laughs> and I fell for it hook line and sinker. <laughs> Well, heck, no judgment, but I will not get up at 6.30 on a weekend, man. I wake up at that time during the week, and that is just because I have no choice. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I spent under $100, and I got a cool uh, um, sweatshirt that has, like, the company... uh, It's black, and it, it doesn't have any, like, color to it. It's just an embossed version of their logo across it which is really cool Cool. and they got a black beach towel that has the same thing so i was like black beach towel awesome (laughs) (laughs) and then i got some they're like they look a lot like converse but they have rubber around the the toe area so there's like a rain boot kind of but then the canvas part is just like they treated it so it's waterproof oh cool i've got For living where we do, I own far too few pairs of waterproof shoes. (laughs) Well, my only other pair of boots are not like rain boots. They're like fashion boots. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? I'll do it. And, and I, especially now that I've put in my two weeks at Target, I don't want to like promote them, but the line is called Hunter. And I guess I hadn't heard of them before they started, they were going to get them, but I guess it's like this like celebrity like all the celebrities wear all their stuff to festivals i don't know hmm. yeah, it, i've never heard of them they're like a rain boot company and it's of course a festival is like a muddy disgusting mess so yeah <laughs> i mean depending on the festival i guess yeah depending on the part of the country but around here for sure yeah <laughs> so uh that was my morning my early morning and then i uh came home changed into my new clothes. <laughs> mm. And then I uh, went to a poetry writing workshop. So that's where I've been for most of the day. So I'm just a little drained in that respect. Yeah, that's a that's a long day for a Saturday. And then after recording, I have a poetry event that I Oh my goodness. I really want to go to, but I'm like just feeling how I am right now. I'm like, I don't know if I'll be able to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Play that one by ear, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, especially after, you know, chatting for an hour. Yeah. Well, I know what's up with you, but would you like to explain? Yeah. So you were there for at least part of my last weekend, but I got married. Yay. Ooh. Yeah, it was wonderful and everything was perfect. Like, I really couldn't change anything about it. Like, it was beautiful. It was fantastic. But, uh, I mean, I don't know if there's much to say about it. It was, a, I'm married now and it it, <laughs> it happened and it, it was good. And, and we had a good time and it was fun. Um, I will say, so after, like, the more, 
<laughs> so we left the, the reception about the same time that you did. I, we didn't stick around for much longer yeah. mm-hmm. um, after you left and uh, went to our hotel. <laughs> it was so funny. We were like, oh, my God, I'm so tired. It's been such a long day. And we looked at the clock in the hotel room, and it was 930. <laughs> like oh my god like we had that venue reserved until 11 what the <laughs> hell i'm so tired it's absurd uh but then we had to get up very early the next morning dr- to drive out t- to see my great grandmother for her 100th birthday mm-hmm. so that was that was actually really nice it was it was most of the time a pretty nice drive uh in the sort of because you know it's just down um we basically just drove along the Columbia River Gorge to yeah. oh, Eastern Oregon. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love so that. So it's a lovely, lovely drive, but like until we reached like past Troutdale, it was like just pouring down oh. rain. It was- and that that freeway is just like so flat. I'm sure there was a lot of water. A lot of water on the road. Oh. Uh, I mean, it's you know it's right there by the river. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was beautiful though. Uh, Multnomah Falls was. so super full like you know we drove past it Mm -hmm. uh, on our way out and on our way back and it was like big big falls it was kind of cool um but most of the drive it was nice not not too bad of weather it ended up getting pretty sunny especially on our way home but uh, my great grandma's birthday was really nice i can't believe she is 100 years old this woman (laughs) she still lives at home she uh cooks for herself she still Uh, drives i don't i know i don't understand she looks so good like Mm -hmm. i'd believe that she was 70. wow yeah she's like she's like barely wrinkled it's insane i don't know what this woman's done but like maybe she lied about her age the other way that would be (laughs) that would be unprecedented (laughs) it would be it would be so like i'm really uh happy to be related to her (laughs) yeah you're like i'm going to live forever (laughs) for sure like if i just take care of myself take it slow like man i've got i've got a nice long healthy future ahead of me because she's (laughs) just doing remarkably well uh i I don't i don't know man you got 70 more years of podcasts 70 more (laughs) i wonder what podcasting will look like in 70 years (laughs) I don't even want to think about it. Yeah, uh, mind boggles. Uh, what are, what's even going to exist? I don't know, man. But well, it was that... wonderful. Go ahead. Hmm? Oh, Go ahead. nothing. I was just, yeah, it was really, really wonderful. It was a nice drive back. And I'm still super not used to calling Will my husband. Like, Yeah. <laughs> well, because yeah. it's been seven days since you got married and you were together and for seven years or eight years. So it's Closer like, to nine years. Yeah. So. so. <laughs> and you, you were only like engaged for, what was it, like a like year or two? Like six months or something. Six months, yeah. yeah not so, even a year. So. so boyfriend is just more... Yeah. yeah, you had that longer. Yeah, and like I'm working on getting my name changed right now, and that's super weird. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> like I have no attachment to my last name, but it is still. It's sort of like those. It's a little bit of like a a grieving process to g- get a new name. Like I've never yeah. experienced anything where it's just like it's not even that I like my name at all, but it's just kind of like ah. But I've always had this name. Yeah, you, you, like you've been that person up until now. Yeah. Yeah, so that's weird. But, uh, yeah, I've just been recovering from <laughs> last yeah. weekend all week. Well, I will say that um, one, a couple of things I liked about the wedding. I thought the ceremony was very literary. <laughs> uh, yeah, it did end there up was, There was both Shakespeare quotes and making fun of Shakespeare quotes. Yeah, that was the funniest. Can I tell you, we had no idea. So our officiant was like wonderful. Um, She gave us this questionnaire just asking us questions about ourselves and each other and our relationship. And we didn't really know what she was going to do with that. Turns out she was just going to like compare and contrast our answers. (laughs) And it ended up being super sweet and really very funny. Uh, like, yeah, well, you were- I will say on the receiving end, it seemed like y- you two um, were separate for most of the questions, but some of the questions were so similar. It was like they had to have compared notes. Nope. 
didn't <laughs> completely separately. It's just it worked out that way. Yeah, like what I am um, imagining you're referring to because the comic timing was just too good. It was impeccable. <laughs> so uh, it was the question had been what uh what quote from a uh, you know a book or a poem or something do you associate you know with your significant other what you know what makes you think of your significant other i used a quote from hamlet and and i put a little note saying uh will's going to find this funny because normally i hate shakespeare quotes out of context and then uh she read will's response and uh, honestly it's all such a blur i don't even remember what his what he chose but he added a little note saying i could go digging around for a shakespeare quote but ashley hates those out of context i think that's i think it i think he just for for like didn't do the quote and just said that yeah it was it really was, funny uh, was like hilarious. everyone like there was so much laughter and that was yeah. wonderful like normally wedding ceremonies can be kind of dry and dull but like there was just so much laughing and a little bit of crying and it was just it was great man Well, no, another thing with ceremonies because they tend to be a little dry i think people uh, especially lately other weddings i've been to they cut them really short just because they know people don't like sitting through that. But I think mm-hmm. yours was a little longer, but I think because it was like, it was really intimate and also the humor really helped make it, you know, seem really special. Yeah. It was actually like half an hour. Right. Yeah. The last one I went to was like six minutes. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it wasn't that yeah. short, but you know, it felt like that almost. Yeah, like 10 minutes or something. Yeah. I was kind of surprised at how long it was. Um, I'm sure that, you know, for everyone, it was nice and, and enjoyable. For me, I was like, Will and I were talking afterward, and we were like, man, I had to like keep reminding myself not to lock my knees. Like, I was. <laughs> <laughs> We're just up there like, okay, okay. And like, I'm up there in, you know, four inch heels and <laughs> like, we're just trying to like keep standing, holding each other's hands. Like, don't let me fall over. <laughs> you know? It was so funny. One of the the little girls, not the littlest one, but the other girl. That's um, Tessa, my niece. She, she was like kind of bored and she was just like leaning on like that <gasps> fancy railing that was right behind you. Oh, and I was like, oh God, oh God, be careful. I know. I know, I know. Like, I didn't know what she was. Honestly, that was really very well good her. for her. That was yeah. very good for Tessa. Like, love the kid. She's kind of a mess sometimes. Like, <laughs> she, I, you don't know what to expect from her. I was like, hopefully, you know, she's just going to be happy to be there and be a part of it and be in a pretty dress and everyone's looking at her. Like, and she was good. But yeah, she definitely got a bit antsy. Uh, <laughs> but it was my- still great. Yeah, my other favorite part was at the reception, your first dance. It was like, (laughs) okay, so listeners, imagine stepping into like, what's that director guy who did Moulin Rouge? Baz Luhrmann. That's a Baz Luhrmann scene. That's basically what it felt like. Uh, well, I appreciate it. Uh, I've gone and watched the video, and we <laughs> definitely messed up. But yeah, we wanted to choreograph something because it's like we felt so dumb. Like you know, it's a nice part of this whole like tradition and ritual of a wedding to do the first dance. But it's kind of like yeah, just watch us sway back and forth for six minutes. Like well, no, that like, sounds. Not Will fun. has a reputation to uphold. Yeah, the I funny mean, thing is, he doesn't even like. He's actually not a dance instructor. Really? He teaches theater at a dance school. Oh, uh, no, he actually mistake. doesn't. He doesn't really like dancing. Uh, he's, <laughs> you know, he's definitely trained, you know, at conservatory and stuff. But he doesn't really like it. So, yeah. uh, but that's kind of why we wanted to choreograph something. So he'd be yeah. like, I, you know, I don't really dance. I don't really know what I'm doing when I'm dancing. So like, let's just plan something. And um, his boss at the dance school is the one who choreographed for us. Uh, uh-huh. She couldn't be there at the wedding. She had uh, planned to go to New York. And it's like, well, what are you going to do? Like, you've got plane tickets to New York. You're not going to cancel that. Uh, so this was a nice way to sort of involve her in the wedding. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. she was super, super bummed she couldn't come. She loves Will <laughs> so mm-hmm. much. So she was really heartbroken she couldn't be there. So this is a nice way for her to, you know, be a part of the day. And she'll, you know, I'm sure she's watched the video by now and stuff. But. Yeah, there was, that there was, was also a nice uh, dirty dancing moment. There was a lift. Yeah, actually, it's so funny because we had 
I don't I don't know why Will definitely stumbled. I'm not sure. Like most of the issues that we've had practicing that lift were me having trouble getting up there because mm-hmm. I, you know, to do it's basically he lifts me by the waist. I support myself on my arms on his shoulders so he's just lifting me straight up. Uh, but I just had trouble jumping enough and like supporting myself on his shoulders, on my arms. Like I'm in terrible shape. <laughs> so well, and also having... it's like the biggest trust exercise. Like, <laughs> yeah. And just, I mean, and I trust he's been lifting girls for many years, but, <laughs> uh, I just haven't done much like that. And so, you know, it's scary to get way up there in the sky and yeah, uh-huh. and, and to hold myself up. My upper body strength is not what it could be. I feel like I actually did the best I've ever done, but something happened on my way down because <laughs> Will <laughs> like started falling backwards. Uh, but I think that even with that, that was the best we've ever executed that lift. Well, from afar, it, it looked a little shaky, but other than that, there weren't, it didn't seem like bad or anything, you know? It was yeah, just a, like I it said. Was, I... It was two, two amateurs doing the best they could, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm just glad we put on a good show. Cause it was awesome, yeah. I would have felt silly just making everybody watch us sort of sway back and forth. That's no, <laughs> no fun for anybody. But yeah, no, it was wonderful. It was fun. It was it was everything I hoped it would be. I'm I'm except my dad gave away all the leftovers and the cupcakes and I'm oh, so mad at him. No. I barely got it. Huh? Did you get any of the cupcakes? Cakes? Not a single one. I had oh. like a tiny slice of our cutting cake. We still have the cutting cake. I yeah. would have like kicked his ass if he'd given away <laughs> my wedding cake. But he gave away all all of the cupcakes and they i'm like dude good. they were good i know they were i picked them <laughs> the lemon was one like, was i told you oh, it was the so lemon good. the and lemon's like, the best and I, so the two that i didn't go for the chocolate because chocolate's usually not my fave so i went with the lemon and the the um the uh, carrot cake and mm-hmm. they just went really well together because like the spice versus the lemon it was good mm-hmm. Lem- it's very refreshing lemon yeah, oh, the le- yeah. Mm-hmm. i know i know <laughs> like, all weekend i was like oh boy can't wait to go home and have me a cupcake and then he was like we gave them all away and you know i mean he they gave them to like a an old folks home because I, uh-huh. I had wanted them to give away the centerpieces the flowers to somewhere like that like a an old folks home or a hospital or something and then he just went ahead and gave away all the food too and i was like dude like nice but couldn't you have saved me something like did you have to give it all away and that was your favorite restaurant too yes Uh, i mean and it's not like i can't just go to that bakery and buy some cupcakes or go to that restaurant and have dinner like i can and i'm sure will i don't know about the cupcakes but like i'll eat at that restaurant again but i was just like dude like you didn't think to save me anything uh i was really i was like inordinately bummed about (laughs) about that but yeah it's uh it's weird to be married yeah I can imagine. Well, and the we- uh, what's weird about it is that it's like not any different. Yeah. And so it's just like uh, supposedly I'm married now, so they tell me. It's like yeah. I feel like it would be less weird if like, you know, we did things the old-fashioned way and like we're, you know, now gonna live together for the first time or whatever and you know, things were different. Yeah, but if no, there was actual like, change. <laughs> Nothing is changing. Everything is the same as it's been. And just supposedly we're married and I'm changing my name to Johnson. So, <laughs> like, yeah, that's what's. I just have to keep reminding myself, like, that's my husband. That's my husband. That's my husband. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's weird. But good times. Everything was wonderful. Hey, Alex. Yes. Can you teach me about poetry? Sure. <laughs> um, I might have to go get my dinky little laptop that I'm not using, though. I completely forgot about that. So another thing that I did this week was that I went into an elementary school in my hometown. And I taught a workshop on poetry. Yeah. And 
I did that with a, a program in, in Clark County um, called Poets in the Schools, where they have actual poet people go into elementary, middle, high schools and just, you know, share a little poetry with everybody. And I went into Mr. Dixon's fifth grade class and I chose to teach them a very intense subject. Yeah. <laughs> in, in, within poetry. Um, because he said that they were very bright and so I trusted him. So I chose to talk to them about uh, a, a sort of thing in poetry called verisimilitude. Hmm. Which is like the prettiest word. <laughs> <laughs> it is a good one. But it's also like, what does that mean? And it's a very big word. And it was really fun to write it on the board and be like, ha ha, look at this f- big fancy word. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to do this today. <laughs> um, and it has the easiest, shortest definition you could possibly imagine. Um, basically, it means truthiness. <laughs> Or believability, um, which is just like that's poetry for you, you know. Like it's this big, huge word that's like, oh, it just means having the essence of truth. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I went in with t- talking about that, um, and it's basically like what one thing that's really helped me as a writer of poetry is um, realizing that everything or a majority of the stuff that I need for my own work is in me. And I just have to sort of pluck out those specific details from my life that have, you know, in some sort of uh, relation to a poem or that I can somehow twist into being relevant to a certain topic. Um, And that's sort of where the verisimilitude comes in. It's like you want a poem to read as truthful even if only a certain detail is the truth and the rest is sort of fabricated around that to enforce it um but that's you know sort of how i view poetry as a writer and as a reader i want to (laughs) (laughs) he never meows that loud that's so cute i don't even know where he is (laughs) wow Anyway, um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I went in and I talked about about um, poetry with these kids and I gave them some writing prompts and it was really fun. And oh my goodness, okay, this is may, might be sort of obvious to people that work with young kids like that on a daily basis. I found the cat. Um, <laughs> is that uh, they're hilarious. Like not just as little balls of energy, but like, their poems were so funny and like so daring in ways that an adult would never even think of. Cause obviously like they don't have, they don't as have the much hangups of the, that. Yeah. A lot of them they don't have. Yeah. So it was, hmm. it was surprising and, and fun. Um, and another thing I talked to them about was um, that I learned in college was uh, a regular amount of detail versus a, a, like an intensely specific amount of detail. And the difference between those being a regular goldfish cracker and a flavor blasted goldfish cracker. (laughs) (laughs) Obviously the flavor blasted being way better. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'm a bit of a goldfish purist myself, but you know, (laughs) I, I mean any, any kind, even the like weird saltine kind that are just regular. (laughs) Those are so weird to me. Like, but in tomato soup, they are perfection. All right, I'll I'll buy. Them. I mean, because they're basically just oyster crackers, right? <laughs> <laughs> but they're fish oyster crackers. There you go. They're shaped like a fish. Um, but yeah, so that was another. Uh, that was one of the things I'm doing for Poetry Month, uh, and then of course the Poetry Field Day today, and then later on in the month I'm going up uh, north a little bit, and I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the same workshop I did with the fifth graders, but with adults. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? I think that. A child or adult, a lot of people are coming at poetry from the same starting place, you know? Well, and, and, and I and I chose poems as, as examples for my, my prompts. Um, one of them is from uh, 
a trans woman, but the poem is about like being a kite, like the the object that you fly in the air on, at the beach. Yeah. So it doesn't like it, it's not necessarily like gonna rattle any feathers, but it's you know interesting nonetheless. Sure. Yeah. So I mean, it's just like it's been interesting to especially since I haven't done it in a while to come at poetry from a teaching perspective. Yeah. Purely as a writer. So I'm curious what, um, like, cause you've, you know, you've taught the children, you're going to, you're going to teach adults. Um, what are your sort of first considerations when you're going into like introducing people to poetry who maybe have never even attempted it before? Yeah. Um, so m- what I like to do is I like to go with a primer of, and this is definitely like my, my view of poetry as a whole. And I've probably said this in the past because we've talked about poetry before and I'm in like, I just noticed I'm in like this weird, like lower register when I'm talking about it. <laughs> You're being serious, boy. I'm being serious, even though poetry, especially lately I've found to be very fun and funny. Um, but, uh, what I like to do is give a primer of like, I know that before in, in school, you, you've been taught that poetry is about unlocking that like hidden meaning. And sure. It's like something question. to be decoded. Yeah. And that's, I don't know where the heck that came from, but whoever like started doing that in education really needs to like, I don't know. <laughs> there out. needs to be some sort of re- repercussion for that dead person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, because what I think, uh, especially people that are new to reading and writing poetry is like, it's not about figuring it out. It's about finding something in it, anything in it that you can relate to and relate to, or find some sort of meaning in. It doesn't have to be the true secret meaning that some writer somewhere that you've never met and you're never going to meet thought of. It has to be a meaning for yourself as the reader or Mm -hmm. if you're writing it as a writer. So uh, you sort of personally subscribe to the concept of sort of the, the, the death of the author. Well, I mean, the author is still important, but like, I I don't, I don't want somebody to be intimidated By trying to figure out their intentions. You're not beholden to them. Yeah. Like what, are, like, what are they? You don't know them and they don't know you. You know, if anything, it's, it's about discovery, not like, I don't know. It, it, it's just like going back to that, like lock and key. Like you don't have to unlock the door. Sometimes you can just admire the door. <laughs> and like, okay. and like the, 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 the 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 metal detail on the doorknob like sometimes that's enough so what do you do to like sort of get people over that idea that like it's this big scary thing to approach well i don't i don't know if i have a a a a, a way of doing that just yet i'm still sort of figuring out like how to get people past that i know that just saying that it's not about unlocking the mysteries of of life doesn't make them you know it it might uh explain it a little bit of what I, how i'm coming uh, how i'm approaching it but it doesn't you know give them the tools to do it so i don't know exactly how what method i'm gonna i'm gonna use um i try to be really especially if i'm like for example the fifth graders like i was going around as they were writing and sort of answering questions they had um so i would just like get down to their level and you know not every writer is going to be on the same uh, playing field like some people yeah. just aren't born writers um, but you have to sort of figure out a way to make them feel okay with their work um, I'm thinking of one of the little uh, fifth graders he wrote a poem about not liking poetry <laughs> <laughs> and it, it just made me laugh because it was he rhymed he was using rhyme talking about not liking poetry. I'm like, I said, he didn't have to rhyme, but here you are doing poetry. Yeah. You know, like, (laughs) 
he made a poem in his contempt for poetry. And so I was just like, I, I know you're trying to fight against this, but you're doing this whether you are realizing And you're it or doing not. it well. <laughs> yeah, it was it was very fun. Um so yeah, I don't know. It's 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 about it's it's about making poetry personal. Um and I and in, in the um the workshop a little bit I, I also mentioned like using personal life details like a memory that you have or or something like that. Um just to sort of because because if you can find a way into the poem to writing it, then the reader's gonna find a way in. Yeah. So yeah. Hmm. My cat so, has never meowed and he's just like <laughs> <laughs> trying so hard to be a part of this episode. He probably wants outside, but uh, I want him linger because he's fun. He's just our little mascot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, what kind of, you know, what kind of questions did these kids have? Like, what did they, you know, what were they interested in? Oh, um, I'm trying to think of a specific one. They were just really, uh, yeah, I, I should have written them down because they were, they weren't like the biggest questions because they were still fifth graders. But like, mm-hmm. just asking like what they can and can't do. I'm like, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. Like, or oh, the one thing was like, how long does it have to be? I was uh, like, what? Well, <laughs> because, and like and- because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a, a elementary school teacher by trade. And like, <laughs> if you remember back to elementary school, it's like write something that's like a page long or like you know yeah for sure it's always like a a a, a length requirement and well, even then, in college sometimes that happens a lot too yeah students just are so used to having rules yeah and i think they were like a little bit unnerved by not having them yeah um, <laughs> and and then they were like uh when we're done what do we do and then the the teacher he was like write another one and i was like yes He's on my side. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that I thought that was really interesting. There, there a little bit of the hangups with the length, and uh, there were some questions too about the rhyming. But they, they either rhymed or they didn't. I mean, sometimes it helps, you know, if it comes naturally because that's what you know poetry to be. Then go ahead, you know. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever works for you. Yeah, that I mean that is you know uh, uh it seems like it would be a difficult thing when you know teaching poetry especially in context of a public school because so much of public school is about sort of standards and you know s- concrete expectations and that just seems pretty antithetical to oh, completely. <laughs> being productive in a po in poetry like it's just that's not how it works that's not it's and and so you know i get when teachers want to teach kids poetry and they're like okay i really want you to like you know you you can't make a rubric for like personal meaning you know you can't you can't you can't put a score on how well a child like searched their heart so you <laughs> like what do you do like how you know so that's yeah. that's why you know they're like okay how long does it have to be because those are yeah. the only kinds of metrics that mean anything yeah. but mm-hmm. it, they're useless here well and like the other option is like include three metaphors include an alliteration like that's and so it, limited and it's like and it kind of kills the m- personal significance of it it kills that and it kills the improvisation too a lot of poetry is like whatever comes up you know and Mm -hmm. and they're all also poets that don't use any of those things you know yeah yeah Um, so i mean and so i guess maybe when it comes to when it comes to that, because I'm, I'm sort of trying to compare it in my head to my education in other art forms, you know, in music, in acting, especially. Honestly, that's what I'm, I'm finding sort of the most oh, yeah. uh, significant comparisons mm-hmm. to, because it kind of seems like, uh, you know, especially when you're a child, but, you know, when you are just learning how to do poetry, it's more about just building a toolbox. And maybe you're not going to create your most meaningful work at that time, but you're just learning what you have at your disposal to communicate. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
Uh, so yeah, like when I was learning how to act, like I wasn't doing like meaningful work. No, but you were I learning how learning, to stand on a piece of tape. <laughs> yeah, learning, learning the tools that I would then be able to go on and use to do something more. I don't know. Uh, like of better quality and 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 meaning like it's so you know maybe maybe when you're you know in fifth grade and you're just learning like what poems can be it, it's still useful even if you're not necessarily going to be creating works of great personal significance well um a couple things i think that acting is is such a close um correlation because there's the the aspect of rejection that poetry poets have to deal with as well later on um and then also like um well i would say the difference is that how they're regarded in society like acting seems to be this like the highest form of anything except for like being a ceo if you're good at it or whatever whereas like i mean certainly famous actors yeah, yeah exactly are, but that's how yeah. we, that's how we view acting in general as famous people you know yeah i will say part. though i don't think that people who say come to their parents and say mom dad when i grow up i want to be an actor i don't think they get much more support than people who say i want to be a poet <laughs> that's, that's true that's true but like the cultural yeah you can ma- if you make it you can like really make it well well and like the top tier of actors like they're winning awards that are broadcast on television they're in they're famous everyone is seeing they're making millions of dollars the top tier of poets sure they're winning awards and sure they're winning some 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 amounts of money here and there or they're like teaching and making money but like they're not a household name usually (laughs) no that's very uncommon (laughs) certainly um and then Oh, there was something else to do with the acting. I can't just the was... way that you sort of deal with like putting yourself out there. Yeah, I'm not sure. I have to come back to it or something. Yeah, because I, I think what you were you were starting to say something about um, sort of rejection and like it sounded like you were going in a direction of talking about sort of making yourself vulnerable, but I don't know. I mean, that's definitely uh, part of it. Uh, but I, I think I had I had three thoughts on my brain, and I think I can only handle two. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if there's anything that I really need to bring up. Um, do you have any uh, memories from school, elementary, middle, or otherwise, dealing with poetry or... Um, any anything at all about that well sort of so you know because i went to i went to vsaa the art school in vancouver and so i you know i actually had to take a whole year of literary arts class uh uh, in school um and that's great like i love the way this that school does things or at least did things when i was a student i don't know what it's like there these days but um a lot of our poetry stuff was just sort of being introduced to different poetic forms, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. none of which I remember <laughs> at all. And like, I, I've just never found that, that that kind of work did anything for me. Like, not necessarily like as a reader, but as, a, as an artist. Oh, like, I just never... F- well, no, I mean, like, like just f- using different poetic structures. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, just never did it for me. I just never felt like I could. It didn't. It didn't help. Yeah. It didn't mm-hmm. make me. Yeah. Like it, it wasn't how I wanted to be writing. I know exactly what you mean. And like I totally, I totally get how it could do that for somebody to have that structure to fill in. But for me, it just like that's just not how I ever liked to write. <laughs> I, uh, in high school, I kept a poet poetry journal, which was basically a diary that was rhyming. <laughs> so that was, that was like the structure I used for myself was just the rhyme. Um, but these days I really tend to shy away from structure. Um, and I think part of that is because it, you know, my attention span is such that like any little thing will distract me. So if I have to sit thinking of like the next step in this pattern that I have to match, I'm going to lose something or I feel like I'm going to lose something. 
Um, that being said, I like the challenge that a form can present. Um, I like I, I like this National Poetry Month. I'm doing uh, writing a poem a day, so thirty for thirty, um, and I I've achieved one sonnet. All right. Um, and it's not a rhyming sonnet. It's not rhyming. So it's a very loose sonnet. But like just the the sort of like having that sort of built in structure, um, it almost felt like it made the poem sturdier in a, in a way. Um, so it, I think it, it, it can benefit. But if you're just learning, it can also be really intimidating. Like there are so many different forms and I only remember like three of them at once. Like... <laughs> <laughs> and that's just the names of them not even like how they go like if you asked me what the pattern for a limerick was i'd be like what i think that might be the only one i do know and that's just because limericks are awfully popular <laughs> but like what's a villanelle so i don't know anymore i don't remember <laughs> i should know <laughs> yeah as somebody who has a degree in creative writing <laughs> i should know <laughs> Yeah, and like, you know, again, like, I don't want it to sound like I am disparaging anyone who likes to do this, who this works for, who who has who have used these forms. But like, to me, when I ever tried to do that, it always felt disingenuous. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, it just never yeah. felt like I could write truthfully. I could, you know, that my poems could have verisimilitude when I was using... <laughs> one of these poetic structures yeah, like it, it just didn't because it's a level it's a level of artifice yeah and and yeah. you know what yeah. i it's very very possible because i've you know only pursued poetry in the just most tenuous way like i just you know i i have written very little poetry outside of a classroom context and i feel like maybe if i did do more of that if i did pursue this further and got more comfortable with those poetic forms it's very very possible that they would become useful to me mm -hmm. but where i have been writing from at up to this point in my life they've just never been useful for me yeah at, at this point in my life they're i feel like they're just peeking over the hill of like oh maybe i should start toying with those a little bit because <laughs> there's a mm -hmm. lot you can do like just with the own stuff that going on in your head, but at certain points you have to sort of start seeking outward. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's, and yeah, certainly not to say that I don't, I haven't enjoyed poetry using, you know, more structured forms like hell, I, you know, we used Christopher Marlowe and Shakespeare quotes in our <laughs> wedding ceremony. So it's not as though that's not something that appeals to me. Like, I think that, you know, people have, you know, poets have used these to really striking effect. And I just haven't been able to get there <laughs> myself. Yeah, they're, they're, I didn't even think about form. It's, it's funny. I didn't think about form at all when I thought about what we were talking about today. I'm like, wow, <laughs> that's kind of a really big part of poetry. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, it just seems like maybe you're a, a little bit more um, comfortable in the in the Whitman school of poetry, at least at this point in your poetic career. Also, um, the sort of state of poetry right now, it's very loosey goosey. Yeah. <laughs> Both in, you know, rhyme and form. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, you know, just given what poetry has you know, gotten broken into the mainstream with, you know, uh, milk and honey and what have you, like these things that it's just like, yeah. mm -hmm. it's not, you know, you well, take that also, back in time, kind of like... you know, a hundred years and people are going to be like, that's not a poem. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, they're going to be like, Instagram, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, one another exciting thing that I've heard about recently is two um, pretty uh, spectacular poets right now, uh, Ocean Vuong and uh, Kava Akbar. Uh, they are writing poems for a feature film that's going to be coming out this or next year. Um, hmm. Yeah. So, and I guess the premise of the the movie is that uh, it's like this uh, kid who's like a poetry savant, and so these two real life poets are writing poems. For this kid in the movie and i'm just like that's so cool <laughs> yeah that would be bad if they didn't get like actual experienced poets to do that because i just feel like that oh, would right. fail it real would... hard if like a screenwriter was trying to write poetry for a savant poet 
<laughs> right. And, 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 and honestly, these two poets that they picked are perfect. I mean, like their stuff is just very, it's not out there or strange or anything. It's just so good at what it does that mm-hmm. like from a kid, it's going to be like, holy moly. <laughs> So I'm curious. I, I I don't know if um, sort of the the kids that you were teaching would have had the sort of wherewithal to to consider this and to and to ask. Maybe adults would be more um, likely to to wonder about this. But like, what do you think? Like, why should people do poetry? Like, why should why should any, why should people make poetry? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um... And and one of the conversations I've seen a lot, especially on poetry Twitter, um, is that poetry is not a substitute for therapy and emotional work like that, but it is definitely a way of communicating the work that you have gone through and sort of um, reconceptualizing it to others and to yourself. Um, I know that I had a poem that was recently published that came entirely out of um, a session I had at therapy and how like life-changing that was for me. And I was like, I have to share this with other people through this meeting of, of poetry. Um, so I think that poetry and, and I think people can get this much on their own, that it's definitely an outlet. Um, but I think that, um, it's usefulness on that level is really, um, especially right now, really uh, fertile. We don't, I I think we don't even really know how much work poetry can do in our society. I mean, Shakespeare is, you know, Shakespeare and it's like everywhere and it's so pervasive, but that poetry doesn't do work in our cultural context. It doesn't solve issues. And I think that right now poetry is really changing people's minds about certain topics. Um, There's a lot of talk about political poetry and how like, oh, you can't write a poem that, uh, if if you write a poem about a political subject, it's not gonna last very long. It's not gonna have, you know, it's not gonna be immortal or some, yeah, some bullshit like that. Whereas a lot of other people will be like, Every poem is political, whether you're aiming it to be a political poem or not. If you have a poem that's void of all politic and void of all currentness, then that's political in that you're avoiding it. Mm -hmm. Well, and I wonder like what, because like that sort of brings into the conversation the question of like, what's your goal with poetry? Is your goal to like write something that's going to endure for hundreds of years? Or are you just trying to like say something, you know, like there's a lot of stuff that's worth writing. That's not necessarily going to be relevant in a hundred years, but that's okay. Like just write it. It's exactly worth something now. I think that if something has a timestamp on it, like you include Facebook in a poem or something like that, like it has value in the future in that we can see more about the time period that was written. We have a history. And I think viewing history through poetry, even though I'm yeah. not really great at li- reading uh, poetry uh, from the past, I'm, I'm very m- a lot more interested in current poetry. Um, but I think having the access there that if you need it, it's there and it's a different perspective than a history book or a, uh, a movie or um, a news clip. Yeah, I think that that viewing from a from a historical point of view as a, you know, from a from the perspective of a historian, like art can be way more valuable to understanding a culture than history books can. Like records only get you so far. You can't know about life from records. You see the technique that was used and you learn a bit about an artist. You also see what was culturally relevant to that time period what sort of styles were used, what sort of, uh, yeah. And just like what people valued, what people thought about, you know, that, that matters so much. And, and, you know, you can't get that from, you know, a drier, more, uh, you know, I don't know, logical kind of a document, you know, it's, it's not, 
they're not useful for understanding culture. And I think also in a weird way, poetry is a lot harder to erase. Um, a textbook can be rewritten in a different edition. Um, poetry is is in a place where it's so disregarded in a lot of venues that it's like um, it can hide. Yeah, it, there have been a few uh, significant cases of poetry really riling people up. Oh, I think you might be talking <laughs> you know? about Allen Ginsberg. <laughs> I was thinking about Ginsberg, yes. That's, I think, one of the most significant cases, at least in modern history, of a poet being like thought of as being dangerous, you know, being... Yeah, that's, think that's a good of, like. It. And not, just, but like, yeah, to to uh, being powerful, even. Well, yeah. Can you imagine like being so upset that you were like doing a whole court case and all that? Like, yeah, like for <laughs> for a poem, like that's crazy. But like that happened. That really yeah. happened. <laughs> yeah. It, it's funny because my poetry mentor, who I just um, went to the work his workshop earlier today, and I go every month if I can. Um, He's a wonderful fella. He um, went to what's called the Jack Kerouac School of Disembodied Poetics, which was co-founded by Allen Ginsberg. <laughs> so he's, he's a fan. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, he, Ginsberg did do significant work. Like oh, yeah, he... you, can, you can learn a lot about um, uh, that time period and that time period for poetry by reading his stuff. Yeah. And you can also learn a lot about drugs. Sure. I mean, that's what those beats were all about, right? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, it was a big part of things at the time. Oh, total side note, but I think it's like a weird fact. Um, and it's probably really obvious to other people, but I thought it was interesting. Um, the Beatles, there's a reason they're, they spelled Beatle incorrectly, because it's after the Beatles, mm-hmm. which, I mean, I'm sure that's obvious to other people, but I thought it was funny. Well... Honestly, there's actually a few stories floating around about where that came from. Mm-hmm. At, at one point, Paul McCartney claimed that it came to him in a dream. So, <laughs> no, that was probably after their their uh, influence with drugs. Yeah. Well, yeah, because honestly, like they, I don't know. That, it's a total side ba- bar, but like before they were, you know, quote unquote discovered, like they were a really different band. <laughs> 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 they were they were rowdy boys back in Liverpool. um okay well any last thoughts then anything uh any sort of resource reading recommendations anything you want to tell people about or um well i one of the resources that i've been using a lot I've, i've like promoted at the end of every episode which is the commonplace podcast um which is conversations with poets and other people um, that's excellent. Um, as for resources with, in terms of like trying to find some poetry, I haven't been the best at finding it this way, but I've recently realized like, go to your local library, even if it's, if it's a small library, they've got something. Um, and I would ask about it, look at some of the names that are on the list or on the shelf, even if you don't pick up the book, like look at some of the names and see if you recognize any of them. And then if you recognize a name, like maybe pull down a book and read one poem. And then usually from that one poem, you can be like, okay, that interested me enough to go further or I'm not interested at all. Let's shelve them for now. Mm -hmm. So I I think it's very much like, again, like you want to find something that interests you. You want to find something that is important to you. There's all sorts of poetry out there. I have a poetry book about fungus. (laughs) It's visual poetry dealing with mycelium and all the weird parts about uh, fungi. Like, there's something for literally anybody. <laughs> yeah, that's that's very true. Just just like it is of any art form. Yeah, um, and then the last thing I want to read just uh, one page really quickly. It's pretty short um, from a book called. Don't Call Us Dead by the poet Denez Smith. And this was a finalist for the National Book Award last year. Um, And this is just the very first page of the very first poem. And I just think it's not only super important 
but also super uh, beautiful. <laughs> mm. um, so I'm gonna read it, and people can look at look it up. It's it's pretty easy to get this book um, if you really want it because it was uh, well regarded, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm assuming most bookstores will have it. And I'm sure uh, some libraries will have it as well. Um, the poem is called Summer Somewhere. Somewhere, a sun. Below, boys, brown as rye, play the dozens and ball, jump in the air and stay there. Boys become new moons, gum dark on all sides. Big bruise blue, water to fly. At least tide, at least spit back a father or two. I won't get started. History is what it is. It knows what it did. Bad dog, bad blood, bad day to be a boy, color of July well spent. But here, not earth, not heaven, we can't recall our white shirts turned ruby gowns. Here there's no language for officer or law, no color to call white. If snow fell, it'd fall black. Please don't call us dead, call us alive someplace better. We say our own names when we pray. We go out for sweets and we come back. So again, that's mm. one page. <laughs> <laughs> and it's only like more beautiful and more heartbreaking from there. So uh, definitely super recommend that one. Great. Uh, well, you know what we haven't done in a few episodes now? What? Recommendations. Okay. Well, this recommendation, well, it's like an anti-recommendation, but I wanted to talk about it after we talked about poetry. Um, yeah. I tried to watch the movie Dune. <laughs> ah, Dune. Yes. Which I've only heard, I've only heard fanboys talk about like, oh, it's like science fiction and it's best. Blah, blah, blah. I mean. Listen, like, it's a David Lynch movie, so that means something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it also was, like, panic-inducing and... <laughs> yeah, that's what it means when it's a David Lynch movie. I, that's what I'm referring to. I could to. not finish it. I stopped when they got new names, and I was like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, no, I do not blame you for not getting down on that film like it's like i liked a lot about it but it was just overwhelming yeah it's a lot and it's crazy it's i mean it's david lynch taking on like an already pretty bizarre science fiction series so it was weird that david lynch did that so you, you didn't even <laughs> did you get to sting in the in the in the little speedo I did, thank you goodness. You did see that Sting was... in the Speedo, so at least you got that out of it. I did not appreciate the um, the Baron, though. And the, the sort of, That's really one yeah. of the m most upsetting parts of the movie, yeah. Yeah, um, but I, don't really understand I, I did that. a little research because I was a little annoyed and upset by it, but I, I realized that's a little bit more to do with the author of the series than, um, than the Yeah, Yeah, that, there's definitely some... some weird business uh though all of this stuff with him floating around and flying through the air <laughs> that was all david lynch that was 100 percent david lynch that's can, not I in can, the books i can support that <laughs> <laughs> it's really upsetting in just many ways <laughs> well do you have any positive recommendations do you have anything that you've been enjoying lately um i've been re-watching um uh, lady dynamite on netflix Oh man! <laughs> um, and if anybody's interested, I would highly recommend the first season. The second season got a little muddy, um, so not so much that. But but a hundred percent recommend uh, Maria Bamford, uh, the star and creator of that show, her stand up special uh, "Old Baby," um, which is mm -hmm. also nice because it's just like she's so sweet and hilarious and like rotten. <laughs> <laughs> And she does voices cool. like I, I had to like look up all her voice acting credits and it's like everything. I love comedians who are voice actors. When her, it's like you, you would assume so based on just the voices she does on her shows and her specials. But like she's like voice number 16 in, in every show. 
<laughs> just is getting in there. Yeah. Do you have anything that was really surprising or? Um. Or well, I decided because I so. <laughs> Uh, you very, um, I think rightfully did not see Annihilation. Uh, I, I loved it because that's where our tastes diverge. Uh, but I decided because I enjoyed the movie so much, I wanted to start reading the books. Oh. Um, so I'm halfway through the first novel because it's actually a three part series and it's uh-huh. so far really different i mean i'm enjoying uh-huh. it a lot but it, that book is an entirely different experience from the movie like it, it's interesting how like yeah i can it, it is definitely the movie is an adaptation of that book and it's a really 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 good movie um but they just kind of did a whole different thing oh. <laughs> um so definitely both great uh just a totally different experience uh it's uh definitely at this point not as frightening yeah. like it's unsettling and creepy but not like scary the way the movie is mm-hmm. um but aside from that i actually have been getting really into mike rugnetta's podcast reasonably sound mm-hmm. um folks might know mike rugnetta as the um host of the former youtube series pbs idea channel i love that guy he's very mm-hmm. smart and very cool Uh, His podcast, Reasonably Sound, is about, it's just about, like, audio and sound, and he's just, like, an audiophile, but it's, you know, because he's this sort of thoughtful and interesting, uh, inquisitive person, it's, you know, he sort of starts, it's a, it's very sort of, like, philosophical, um, I don't even really know how to, like, I don't really know how to describe what it is because yeah. he, he just calls it a podcast about sound. And yeah, it's just sort of about sound. Uh, he just, one of the episodes I listened to recently was on um, animal sounds and the semiotics of them. So sort of like what the, what if any meaning is to be derived from animal sounds yeah, and mm-hmm. like whether animals make meaning the way that humans make meaning with sounds. And it's like, it's just really interesting. He covers just such a breadth of topics underneath the umbrella of sound. That, it's great. That, it's really thought provoking. Specifically sounds really interesting. And I've actually relating back to poetry. I've heard of some poets doing work with um, discussing like the similar thing mm-hmm yeah it's 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 trippy and it's cool he did an episode on like subliminal messaging and whether that's like a thing at all like whether subliminal auditory messages are possible and how they work if they are yeah it's really very uh very cool uh check it out if you like to hear sounds <laughs> I've, if you're a hearing person. I love to hear sounds. I do too. I think sounds are just cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, shall we wrap up? Any any last um, words? I want to recommend one more thing. Yeah, do it. So I'm sure anybody that listens to us already listens to her, but everybody needs to listen to uh, Janelle Monae's new single, Pink <laughs> with a Y, because it is 100% amazing. And also watch the music video because it's also 100% amazing. And it has What's-Her-Face from Thor Ragnarok. And she's 100% amazing. And they're probably dating. <laughs> she's in Annihilation. <gasps> she's not verified on Twitter. Isn't that sad? That's a tragedy. That's a, it's an I, insult. I honestly want to like really make a stink about it because that's disgusting. Yeah, you're talking about what? <laughs> Tessa Thompson? Is that her name? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, she's in. she's playing a very different role in Annihilation. And it's really, really good. She's like a very shy girl. Yeah, she's like, uh, I think she's the co-star of Janelle Monae's visual album. So we're going to see some more of her. She's just a, she's a cutie. (laughs) That does it for today's episode. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to us on YouTube if you absolutely love us. And like the video if you kind of just like us. You can also find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Anchor.fm, and elsewhere. Please rate and subscribe so more nerds can find us. Please check us out on Twitter at lit merit pod for updates and news uh also please bug us we need people to talk to 
We're so lonely. <laughs> Usually, <laughs> Ashley and I just communicate back and forth by posting various different things from the yeah. account. <laughs> It's kind of true. Oh, boy. <laughs> and thanks to Jonathan Colton for the use of our theme song, Fraud, from his album, Artificial Heart. Until next time, remember, no, no guilty, guilty pleasures. pleasures.